Hey, what's going on, family? It's Lucklin here with, there's my sister-in-law, <laughs> Kiki, back there, and there's my beautiful wife, Miss Lucklin. And where's little Ethan? Ethan, <laughs> oh, over here. <laughs> All right, so we are in San Marcos, and uh, this is where my sister-in-law goes to college at. And so we decided to come down and spend the day with her. So we're getting ready to go over to this place over here called the Root Cellar. And we're gonna go eat some stuff. And we're back. I accidentally <laughs> hit the button. This is a cool little place. It's uh, very historic, right? Is there a lot of history here? Um, I guess. She's like, you sure. Guess? <laughs> you go to, how, how, how long have you been here? <laughs> There's old buildings and stuff. All um, right. It's my fourth year here. Okay, so. She's a senior. She's been here for four years and she doesn't know how <laughs> historical this place is. All right, that's historical. cool. We're gonna go eat at the root cellar. We'll talk to you in a bit. Yeah, Bye. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so if you can see me here, I don't know if you can see me. The lighting's not good. There it is. Now you can see me. We just got done eating over at the Root Cellar Cafe. It was pretty darn good. Now, uh, looks like Miss Loughlin and her sister are gonna do some shopping. And uh, yeah, we're getting ready to go eat some uh, homemade yogurt. So, see you guys in a bit. And then we're gonna go do some type of like boat ride or something. So, that'll be kind of cool. Glass bottom boat ride. Say hi. <laughs> Say hi, crazy. Hi. They're all gonna say, she's beautiful. <laughs> Watch okay. and see. All right, so we are going to this Aquarina thing. Uh, it's a boat thing, it's over here. Look, over there, check that out. So that's where we're gonna get on some boats. I guess they have glass bottoms on them. And uh, yeah, we're gonna take a tour of the river. So you guys will be seeing that in just a moment. All right, so I guess today we're gonna get a lesson on the uh, rivers here in uh, Texas. We're gonna go take a tour on one in just a minute here. You see they have all kinds of information and stuff on this place. The boats are outside. So yeah, that's what we're gonna go see in just a second here. Kind of an interesting place to go today. San Marcos River Watershed, whatever that is. So yeah, it's pretty cool. There's a fish tank. up there. More fish. Look at all the fish. Hey. What? Oh, look at this weird thing. What is this? What is this? It looks like a side of a wall. And they have just a window here. You know what? Maybe this isn't part of the exhibit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, especially if you put your mouth on. More. The sand is bubbling. More stuff. Alright, so check it out. There's the water down there. When we get closer, you'll be able to see, like, it is really, really pretty water. Babe, yes. say hi. Hi. You having a good day today? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. You look great. Thanks. All right, here we go. There's down here. Look at there's the water down there even more. Let's uh, let's walk down here and see. God. Family day on the river. On the river. Look at this. Look how cool this is down here. It's water, but it's so nice and clear. The... Wow, that's pretty cool. Water. If you haven't seen water before, this is what it looks like on the river. See how clear it is? Wow, that's pretty sweet. Sweet. See you on the boat. All right, so it seems like uh, we're going to be waiting here for about 20 minutes until the boat gets back. Uh, it's like a 30 minute boat ride. So we're going to see a lot of cool stuff underwater. It's a glass bottom boat, so you're going to be able to see down into the water, and he's going to give us a tour and all that good stuff. It's going to be pretty cool. So, looking forward to this. Talk to you guys in a minute. Bye. Lake that was dammed in 1849. However, every drop of water that we're floating on right now is natural artesian spring water. This water is all coming from the Edwards Aquifer. So if you live anywhere between Austin and San Antonio, you are greatly affected by the Edwards Aquifer, whether it's water restrictions, where you actually get your water, or you, say, have the river, uh, the San Marcos River, which is, again, fed by the springs. The first spring I want to show y'all is actually one of our high pressure springs. See that in just a second. Now our spring's about 17 feet deep. 
And you'll notice right here, the plants are starting to move around. There's actually, this high pressure spring produces around 100 to 200 gallons of water a minute. And you'll see there's this large strip of white sand. This white sand is limestone sand being eroded out of the Edwards Aquifer and pushed uphill from the water flow. You'll actually never see any plants growing in this strip of sand for two reasons. One, it's limestone sand. It's not very good at growing anything. And two, the water flow is so fast, no plants can grab root in that area. Now, as you notice, there is a pipe down there. It's actually a PVC pipe. This is here solely for um, research. This has a whole bunch of sensors in it. It goes over the water quality, like pH level, calcium level, oxygen level, conductivity, turbidity, all that awesome stuff. And the reason we test the water here in Spring Lake is, again, this is the natural exit point of the Edwards Aquifer. It's a lot easier to test the water quality here for human consumption than it is to dig a well out in the hill country someplace that can be miles deep. Another big thing, though, is Spring Lake is considered a critical habitat. There are several endangered species here, all of which are greatly affected by the water. Most of them are fully aquatic. Now, the Edwards Aquifer actually supplies water to 10 different endangered aquatic species. Eight species here in Spring Lake are endangered or uh, threatened. Some of them only live here, for example, the San Marcos Dwarf Salamander or San Marcos Campesia. Uh, so it's very neat. As you see down below us, we do have a massive abundance of aquatic plants. We actually have close to 140 different species of plants here in uh, Spring Lake. Not all of those are native, some are even invasive, which is kind of a bummer. But they all kind of have their own purpose. This stuff right down below is a kind of like banana peels. It's known as arrow's head. This is actually one of the main feeding sources for our turtles. Uh, how deep does it get? Right here it's around 8 feet deep. 8 feet? So there's a very cool fish I want to show you. It's over here on the left side. Let me get up as close to this boat as I can. Fish yeah, so right here you can see a really long skinny fish. It's kind of a light brown greenish color. Digging in those plants. This is known as a spotted gar. The spotted gar is literally, as a species, it's older than most dinosaurs. It has a oh, wow, there it is right 250 there. million years old. Now this long skinny fish is armor plated. They have scales like your fingernails, they're very tough. And although you can't see its mouth, it has a very long narrow snout and two to three rows of razor sharp teeth. Oh, wow. These are natural born predators, however, they're ambush predators. They just kind of chill out in the plants waiting for something to get a little too close and then they eat it. Because of this, they're not aggressive. They're actually very, very docile fish. And even though they look like dinosaurs, and they sometimes act like it, they're very docile. I've actually swam with them in the San Marcos River. They just don't care. Most because they don't have any predators either. Cool. No, nothing like piranhas. And piranhas kind of have a, a misunderstood history. Piranhas do eat anything, however, they're not going to attack you if you jump in the water. They have to have signals. For example, blood, like sharks, they smell blood, they go after it. And it's actually the first piranha that bites something is a signal for everything else. It hears a lot of moving and tearing and scanning and whatnot. That's what gets them all. Now right here, as you notice, we have these bubbling sands. These are actually low pressure springs. These low pressure springs produce between 5 and 20 gallons of water a minute. And what I like about these springs the most is the, the physics behind them, really. Essentially, they're little cracks in the bedrock, just like the high pressure springs, except they're real small. And they're forced open by the water pressure of the Edwards Aquifer. So as that pressure changes, our springs change. These springs have the capability of going dormant forever if the water pressure drops and never comes back up. On the bright side, during flooding seasons, like we had, say, this past February, we'll have new springs or reborn springs that have been dormant up to decades. So very cool. Um, a lot of people prefer our low pressure springs because they are much more dynamic. Another fact I like about them is this is where the majority of Spring Lake's water comes from, is our low pressure springs. Although they are a fraction individually of what a high pressure spring is, there are so many low pressure springs that we don't even know about. And this is, again, where most of the water comes from. It's quite cool. The average water temperature? The average water temperature is actually completely consistent of 72 degrees. Now that's a cool thing. If you go to say Barton Springs, Comal Springs, San Pedro Springs, all of them fed by the Edwards Aquifer, there's a whole bunch of turtles down below. Kind of end up trying to. Unfortunately, the turtles don't. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Oh, there's, a, there's one. Yeah. That was a red ear slider, one of our five. Oh, Here's a big old Guadalupe bass right here. Oh, wow. Uh, Oh, there's another one. So oh, the bass are quite active bass. right here. That bass is about two foot long, probably, I don't know, 
Oh, that's a nice bass. That's actually a massive benefit to swimming, fishing, kayaking, all that fun stuff. Oh, look at this down here. These fish just get massive. Now, right here, as you notice, we have another high pressure spring, but it's a lot deeper, and that strip of white sand is quite a bit larger. This spring is 22 feet deep, and the water flow is. On average, around 300 gallons of water, right? much faster. However, this spring has a pretty cool story to it. It has to do with this area's history. If any of y'all have been here before, you may call this area being called Ocarina Springs the Amusement Park. This was actually started in the late 40s, early 50s. And this, we had our glass bottom boats. We had amusement park rides, restaurants, all kinds of awesome stuff. And a man named Johnny Weismiller came through here. Now, Weismiller played Tarzan, Tarzan. back in the 30s. Yep. He was also a gold medal Olympic swimmer. Now, Weismiller got this spring named after him because one day he came by, got on one of our glass bottom boats, and being the kind of guy he was, he decided to jump off the boat, dive down to the bottom of that spring, and drink some of the water flowing from it. Now, the normal water quality flowing from our springs is on average three to five to five times cleaner than tap water. So at the source, it really is clean enough to drink. The problem was the water pressure. 300 gallons of water minute is a lot of water. That's like trying to drink out of a fire hydrant. <laughs> Unfortunately, Weismuller also underestimated the water flow a little bit. He almost drowned, apparently. Oh, boy. Now, he did manage to make it up all by himself. And from what I was told, this wasn't during his acting career. This was actually around 1968. Yep. So he was in his mid-50s to early 60s. Wow. Very cool. I'm from Ocala, Florida. In Ocala, Florida, we actually have Silver Springs there. And yes. that's where he used to shoot all of the uh, Tarzan movies. Yes. Uh, didn't y'all also have a... a Submarine theater and everything in Silver Springs? Yep, that was a long, long time ago, but the glass bottom boats were there, and that's, yeah. yeah. Uh, I've actually told by some of our previous employees that we stole the idea of a submarine theater from them. Really? But then we modified it, that's adding Ralph the Swimming Pig and everything. <laughs> um, now, one thing I want to point out, if y'all are really into turtles, this old fallen tree right here, just covered in them. Uh, oh, these yeah, turtles are mostly there. Texas river cruders. We also have, again, red deer sliders. Uh, when we come back around, everyone on the left side will be able to see it better. Now all these turtles are out here because they're cold-blooded. They're trying to get warm due to the sunlight. However, another benefit to these turtles sunbathing is just like people, they absorb vitamin D from sunlight. Vitamin D helps you absorb calcium and therefore makes your bones and fingernails apart. So if it wasn't for the turtles sunbathing, they would eventually become soft. Interesting. Over, over back by that spring, was there like little holes in there? Because I saw like, oh, like, yeah. that like, so. uh, Sometimes it happens. It just depends on how much water is going from and you can see the hole or not. Look how far down that goes, Dad. Yeah. Well, let's see this over here. All right, so right here you'll start seeing more low-pressure springs. This area is actually our highest collection of low-pressure springs in all the Spring Lake. And due to its appearance, it's called Cream of Wheat Springs. It looks like a big bowl of Cream of Wheat. Cream of Wheat Springs. Now, there can be over 5,000 springs in this area, depending on the water flow again. But one of my favorite things, you notice there's little fish just hovering over the springs here. They're staring down at them, just like y'all are. They're doing it for a completely different reason, though. These fish have learned that the Edwards Aquifer not only supplies all the water, but has its own ecosystem. The ecosystem can consist of around 40 different organisms, including the endangered Texas Farm Salamander. Now that salamander, although he's only about 4 inches long, doesn't have eyes and doesn't move a whole lot, he is a top predator of the aquifer. And all of his prey, if they don't get eaten by him, they get pushed out of these springs. And that's what the fish are waiting for. They're waiting for a free meal. You could even say they're fishing in a way if you want to make it sound really ironic. Uh, very cool. Some of those critters would be ghost shrimps, isopods, anthropods. We actually have uh, two different types of catfish down there. It'd be the wide mouth blind cats and the toothless blind cats. Nice. Uh, they're all very neat. The, the lake average in depth is around 10 to 12 feet deep. Uh, that last spring was actually around 15 to 17. The deepest part is 28 feet, and I will be taking you to that part later. However, right here, I want to point out something. As you notice, there's little bubbles coming out. This is actually all pure oxygen coming from the plants due to photosynthesis. Oh, wow. And another thing is all the light that you see under the boat is ambient light. It's all sunlight. We don't have anything under the boat for lighting, natural light. Now, these plants are about six to eight feet below us, believe it or not, and they still get enough sunlight to make a visual amount of oxygen. Very, very cool. Only possible because our water is so clear. But as you notice, there's a lot more plants than fish around here. So most of this oxygen that's being produced just rises up to the surface, pops, and we get to breathe it. I don't about y'all, but I'm from Houston originally, where oxygen is a little bit rare. <laughs> so I think this is just wonderful. Uh, another kind of neat thing about this part of Spring Lake, if you look way up behind us, you'll see a little green wall beside all those other boats. That is the headwaters of Spring Lake farthest point upstream not only in the lake but the entire San Marcos River system there's no farther point upstream if you look out in front of us you'll actually see a little yellow building way out there 
That building today is a sawgrass. Originally it was a grist mill. It was the sole purpose of Green Lake being created and is the end of the lake. This is it. The only thing that you can't see is our wetlands which wraps around the peninsula here. It's around 21 acres of lake. It's very, very small, but that's actually a benefit. If you say go to Lake Travis, you're not going to see plants like this. You're not going to see little fish, little bugs, all that cool stuff. Uh, and although it is a man-made lake just like Lake Travis, in my opinion, it is significantly better. Um, well, this, this lake has no swimming in it, no nothing, right? It's nothing at all. There is a special way you can swim in Spring Lake. It's actually called the Dive for Science program. If you're already certified to scuba dive, you can take a special class with us. The price can vary between $150 to $300. It just depends on you know, the whole season and everything. Yeah. You take the class, you learn how to dive in Spring Lake without harming the endangered species, properly removing the invasive, don't get hit by a boat or anything, and then you can dive here for free if you do volunteer work for us. That's cool. So it's a very cool deal. That is a cool um, However, right now it is on pause due to the reconstruction. Oh, there's a deer up on the hillside. Where? Yeah, there's deer right up on the hillside. Oh, wow. Uh, now, here's something that we actually see all the time. The reason we see deer up on this hillside all the time is not only is the lake federally protected and safe protected, so is the hillside and so is the peninsula. So no one's going to hurt them out here. There's water flowing from the ground here, so that it's always here, so the deer know this is just a good place to be. Huh, that's uh, this cool. This is why I tell deer all over Texas Hill Country, let alone San Marcos. Uh, every now and then, especially in the spring, you'll see a little fawn just pop around all over the place too. Um, one thing I want to talk about is actually right down here below us. As you notice, it's kind of a rocky bottom. Not a whole lot of plant life, still a couple of springs. This is a pretty neat part of the lake as well, because this is the original San Marcos Riverbed. Before Spring Lake was created in 1849, there was still water flowing here. All those springs I showed you would be like pools of water overflowing. Some of the stronger ones could be more like fountains, kind of blasting out of the ground, which would be very cool. And right here would be the river. The river back then would be very similar to the San Marcos River today, except no exotic or invasive species like any of these elephant ears, for example. There'd be no, you know, bottles, cans, garbage, anything like that, and no college students. So actually, a lot nicer, even though that's kind of hypocritical for me to say. <laughs> uh, still very cool. Um, oh, as you notice, there's uh, five turtles just chilling out on this one little log. <laughs> now, this is both Red Ear Sliders and Texas River Cooters. You notice they're stacking up on top of each other. That is because they all want to be in the sun and they all can't fit on that log. If that means making someone lose sunlight to get more, they'll do it. They don't care. Pretty selfish, huh? Yeah. Uh, what a... Crazy thing, I've actually I've been told that some of these turtles will stack up to four turtles high. What? I'm not joking. And if the bottom turtle gets scared, guess what happens? They all go in the water. They all go in the water. Uh, okay, so there's a, another deer kind of chilling out in the... Or if the bottom turtle is just like, whatever. Bye. Pretty much. Uh, sometimes the, the real small ones, they'll be on top of the larger ones when they're just floating there. And you'll see that turtle swim around, the other one just on the surface floating there, and they don't care. They just don't. Uh, then again, they don't really need to. I mean, it's 72 degree water, full of plants to eat, some of them eat fish too, full of that. No predators really. I mean, life is good. Pretty cool. Yeah. So you said this is a man-made lake? Yes. And so it was dammed in 1849, and that little yellow building in front of us, it was originally a grist mill. Okay. So that's the only purpose. It was actually ordered to be put in by General Burleson himself. Now, as you notice, there's a, that tree line just to the left of the yellow building. That is the dam. It's an earthen dam, or a big pile of dirt. Since that was put in about 160 years ago, it has been reclaimed by nature. It's now covered in these big bald cypress trees, American sycamore trees. And again, just on the other side, that's when you can start swimming and fishing and all that fun okay. stuff. Um, and the river, just like the lake, is always 72 degrees, so you can get in any time of the year. The problem is always getting out. Uh, now right here beneath us, you'll see there's a wire grid. Another very interesting part of Spring Lake's history is this is an archaeological dig. It was a dig down here from 1977 to led by a man named Dr. Joel Shiner. Now Shiner dug here, as I said, for 11 years in an area about the size of a two-car garage. Um, and he dug here because he knew that San Marcos had a, a human inhabitant since at least the Spanish explorers, and we had like written records of that. They are the people who named San Marcos. However, no one really knew how far that human uh, inhabitants went. That's what this dig was for. Since they dug here for 11 years and found over 100,000 artifacts, the oldest of which were called Clovis Points. And the Clovis Native Americans didn't vary between 12 and 15,000 years ago from what I was told. And we found one of the highest collections ever found right here in Spring Lake. This was a massive, massive archaeological find and very, very cool. However, it wasn't the biggest part of the dig. We also found artifacts from the Spanish explorers, tons and tons of other Native American tribes, even stuff from cowboys and ranchers coming through. Wow. Pretty crazy. Something I want to point out, on this weird kind of white dock, there's a large bird. This bird is a great blue heron. 
It's actually, I believe a juvenile, it looks like it hasn't got quite all its blue yet. This is the largest bird per wingspan that we have in Spring Lake. And all they do is just chill out on the banks and fish all day. If I could live just fishing nonstop, I would in a heartbeat. Uh, very cool, not the only aquatic birds we get. We also get grebes, cormorants, uh, egrets, and the fall into even an osprey sometimes. I haven't seen any today though. Uh, very, very neat. Oh, there's actually some grebes way out in front of us. Those little birds, they kind of look like ducks, but smaller. The grebes, keep an eye on them and they're gonna dive under the water. They can actually dive down to about 20 feet, holding their breath for around two minutes. Wow. Uh, I think two minutes is about the max though. So, unless they just don't feel like fishing, which sometimes happens. Um, uh, while you're keeping an eye on them, uh, one thing I want to talk about is the hillside here. You notice there's old docks, stairways, buildings, all this crazy stuff. Also a part of the museum park back in the day. However, it's been closed off to the public for quite some time due to the fact in 1998 it was a massive flood that washed the foundation out of everything. It's been, some, been due, deemed unsafe to the public. So what was this right here? This big green pier was a viewing deck. It was also a snack bar from what I was told. So you go up there, grab some food, and just watch the lake. From up there, you can see the bottom of the lake unless there's a big glare. Uh, very cool. Now, the hillside is actually scheduled to go through the same fate as the peninsula. It's going to be kind of revamped. They're going to take down all these old buildings, make it hiking and biking trails from what I was told. Hopefully, this will take just a couple years. Um, since the peninsula has a higher priority towards the lake, it has been done first. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is this big yellow building on the left side. Some of y'all may recall this being called the Spring Lake Inn. It was actually a hotel built in 1929. It is the oldest thing on Spring Lake. It's even older than our boats. This building will stay here as well. Now it's known as the Texas River Center. It's actually going to go through a name change pretty soon. Um, I believe it's going to be called the Meadows. Anyway, inside the first floor of this building is a small interactive museum. We have an aquarium room with our, some of our endangered species, even a juvenile spotted gar, so you can a nice up close view. Uh, we also have a little baby turtle cage with Three of the other turtles, we also have a little bitty snapping turtle in there, so cool looking. Uh, and there's also the third floor. The third floor is actually roof access. You go up there, a nice bird's eye view of the lake. From there you can see all the fish swimming around, all the turtles. Very, very neat. The only thing that's closed off to the public is the second floor, because that's office spaces. And there is the, the Texas Parks and Wildlife, other organizations that really help save Spring Lake. They're usually also the guys to call the cops if you get caught fishing out here. So again, just don't try it. There's always someone here. Uh, still very, very neat. Get some docking assistance, please. Now, if y'all are real adventurous types, and this is something I, I would recommend on a nice day like today, we do have hiking trails right across the street from our parking lot. This is known as the Spring Lake Nature Reserve. It's 151 acres of just hiking trails. There's actually its own an endangered bird known as the Golden Cheek Warbler out there. Very, very hard to see, but it's there. Um, and San Marcos actually has 19, including this one, green areas, and they're all very cool. If you want to see what those are, we have a map where you bought the tickets. Uh, so you can go check that out. It tells you the green areas. It tells you other points of interest. It even tells you a good place to grab a bite to eat if you're interested. Let's say in just this minute, we're going to start docking. I do have to ask everyone to stay seated while we're docking. However, if we have any last minute questions, I will gladly answer them now. Cool. Thank you very much. The reason we didn't use those boats is we didn't have a full boat. We don't need it. We do use them every now and then. Uh, I just prefer this one, so I drove this one. Uh, so they are exactly the same in dimension and what do you see. Uh, the only real difference is this one's a little bit older. Uh, so like I said, I'll take my friend Marcus here just a minute to, to type the boat. Were there any last minute questions about anything? No? Well again, I have to say, y'all are an awesome audience. I hope you enjoyed the tour. Like I said, get a good feel to, to look around. If you come up with some questions later, just find someone with the blue shirt like mine. We're all over the place. Uh, and again, I hope you enjoyed and, and have a great day. Thank you. It might be a slight bump. Home. There it is. There we go. All right, so one thing we do when we go to San Marcos, every time we do this, we end up going to a place called Bucky's. It's like a gigantic non-truck truck stop. It's got all kinds of stuff in it. I'm just gonna show it to you, it's right here. Have you ever seen one? That's it, you probably saw the t-shirt somewhere out there, but we always come here and stop at Bucky's and get stuff, right? Hi guys. Yep. Look, there's. So look, this is Bucky, right over here on the front. Say hi to Bucky. Look, there's Bucky right there. Wait, there's Heather. Look, say hi. She's taking a picture. Hi. Yeah, hi. So yeah, this is Bucky's here. You can see. There's a sign out there. Yeah, this is this Bucky's out here. That's cool. There's the statue right there. 
Oh, well, Ethan's climbing on it. Hey, Zoe. Good mommy. Right there. Oh, yeah. Monkeys. Have fun.